Hello and welcome to Perth Internet Television. My name is Stuart Webster. And I'm Vivian Corrigan. And it's been a busy fortnight since we uh, last spoke to you. There's been a lot going on. There's been people ill in their beds that can hardly drag themselves out of bed to do anything, but did you? Did you get yourself out of the bed in the end? I did, I did eventually. I, I interviewed a nutritional specialist, would you believe? All the and... are going on about the cold <laughs> ever since we arrived. I, I thought know. men did that, not women. I had the flu. It wasn't just the cold. It was a proper flu. I was really ill. And I sneezed and coughed all over this poor guy that I interviewed last week. It's worth watching for that <laughs> alone, I think. And the classy tissues. Look out for them. <laughs> and also, I went off to taste pies. I love pie. My taste buds were not on oh, the best performance. How did you get that? I know. I love pie. Uh, I was out and about as well. I actually swapped the pies for the omelettes. I was at the Perth College Open Day. It was... Uh, just a, a week or so ago, so there was lots going on. We tried out some courses. I had a bit of an omelette challenge Did as you? Well. Did you have to make one? Uh, yeah, you'll find out the outcome of that. Good. Not the best. No. Not the best. I'm not, not a good cook. <laughs> uh, and also, um, I was out and about uh, at a very important venue. It was a big autism event. So mm. we'll, we'll have a look at the, the new venue to go and visit for autistic people in Perth. Yeah. Uh, uh, what else have you been doing? Well, it's been a big week, hasn't yeah. it? It's been a, a monumental week, not just for the police forces in Scotland, but also for the fire services right across the country. And they chose the fair city, Scotland's sixth city, they chose our venue, yeah. to come along and celebrate this occasion when they all came together as one and are now the Scottish Fire Service. And it was such a big event. And did you find it okay, Stuart? Well... Let's wait and see, shall we? Suspicious. <laughs> yeah, this is what happened. Well, today you catch me outside the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service HQ here in Perth. Yeah, that's right. It's the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service now. It's a, it's a big day for them. They've all come together as one, just as the police force have as well. So it's a big day. They've all rebranded up. Look, check out their new shiny, sparkly trucks. So, of course, this is a big day. This is why I've been sent here to report on the big news story. But it turns out there's nothing happening here, there's nothing going on. Yeah, we've got shiny trucks, we've got new stickers and everything. But really, all the fun's happening down by the Tay, down at the Inch, down by the river is where all the fun and games is happening. I'm missing out on the fizzy pop and the, the spaghetti and all the fun and games. So I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm here with my poi, and we've got nowhere to go. This was silly, Who, whose idea was this? Uh, I'm Ian Miller, uh, leader of Perth and Kinross Council. I'm uh, here in the North Inch. Uh, to welcome the new Scottish Fire and Rescue Service to Perth uh, as their interim headquarters here. Uh, this is a, a tremendous day for Perth to see the, the whole thing up and running and to see so many people here to, to celebrate the, the start of the new service. Uh, I'm looking forward certainly to seeing uh, the new service established here in Perth. Uh, they're already in their new offices and making use of the, the existing fire station in Perth. Uh, and we look forward to hopefully seeing the establishment of the permanent uh, uh, fire and rescue headquarters for the whole of Scotland here in Perth. So a tremendous day for everyone and uh, uh, a, a big welcome to the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service to the city of Perth. Hello, I'm Alistair Hay, the Chief Officer of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. Um, I'm really excited to be here in Perth for the official launch of the new service. 1st of April, Easter Monday, the new Scottish Fire and Rescue Service comes into being. This is the first time in peacetime that we've actually had a national service here within Scotland. What we hope to do is to protect frontline services, the emergency response services and the prevention services that people across Scotland rely upon. But more than that, what we have is a lot of specialist and national resources, such as water rescue, such as rope and line rescue, such as mass decontamination and attending major transport incidents. These specialist resources we intend to make sure that wherever you live in Scotland, people will have a more equitable access than they have had within the existing eight fire and rescue services. But I suppose the most important thing that we hope to do and intend to do is create a closer link to communities across Scotland because although we are a national fire and rescue service we understand that our services are delivered at a very local level. We want to engage with people irrespective of where they live in Scotland. I'm standing here in Perth today and we will have a very a very close relationship ongoing with the people of Perth. But it doesn't matter if you're living in the very north of Scotland or down in the very south of Scotland. The length and breadth, we will be working with local communities to deliver the services that they want. And that is the promise that I make to the people of Scotland. Thank you.
My name is David Stapley. I'm the local senior officer for Perth and Kinross area. Today we are launching the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. The Scottish Fire and Rescue Service is an amalgamation of the eight current services which exist today in Scotland. The benefits of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service will be the provision of more equitable access to specialist resources, better engagement with our local uh, communities, and we are looking to protect the frontline and the frontline outcomes from the uh, financial effects that are affecting the local economy. This, this event today is very much about showcasing the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service and these capabilities and our ability to engage with our local communities. As a local senior officer, I am looking to serve the communities of Perth and Kinross to ensure that the service that they provide is, or they receive is nothing short of excellent. If you're really serious about losing weight, lose weight the Curves way with Curves Complete. I'd like to talk through the most effective weight loss plan that allows you to achieve permanent results without permanent dieting. Curve Smart is the most advanced fitness technology in the world. It gives you moment to moment progress reports. At the end of your workout, it shows you how many calories you've burned, and most of our members are burning up to 500 calories in just 30 minutes. Healthy food choices, 30 minute workout and motivational coaching all at the same time. Well, we're here with Ben Coomber from Body Type Nutrition, and Ben is a performance nutritionist. Now, what does that mean, Ben? I suppose I deal with nutrition, but to make the body perform better. Right, which we all want, don't we? Everyone wants to perform we better. We do. Yeah, energy, sleep, well-being, sport, exercise, Everything. Everyone wants to feel good, so that means you've got to make the body perform better. Excellent. And I want to feel better because I've got a cold, and don't worry, I've got my tissues. <laughs> this is how we roll around here. <laughs> so, you look at people's diets to see um, how they can improve them. And everyone, I suppose, I mean, they don't have the same diet that's going to suit everyone, because I suppose everyone's different. Is that what you think? We are. Uh, you, you look at anyone physically, they're different. And it's the same, if you peeled away the skin and the muscles, the organs, we're all biochemically different on yeah. a cellular level. And remember, every, every nutrient that goes in your body radiates a biochemical reaction in the body. So it, goes, it stands to reason that food can have a profound infect, impact, I suppose, on how that physiology is going to happen. So everyone needs to kind of find their, sort of their ideal mix or their balance of food that's going to make them feel good and perform optimally. Yeah, we're all totally different. Because people, you do respond to different foods, don't you? Um, you know, some people are better with carbs, but other people feel bloated. And I suppose in today's society as well, do you find a lot of your clients complain about, um, you know, maybe gluten or wheat intolerances, dairy It's intolerances. a huge problem. And hence, you know, if you walk down the supermarket aisles now, there's loads of gluten-free food, yeah. free from food. The market for that kind of food is huge. And it, it's not come by bogus. You know, there is lots of people that are suffering with gluten and wheat intolerance. Um, whether it's kind of a medical condition or really inflammatory like celiac disease yeah. or not. Um, and I have so many clients, probably 80%, which is really high and it's a little bit scary, of people that say, oh, I feel bloated, I feel tired, I'm very gassy. And straight away to me, that's an indication that there's an issue within the diet, that they're eating foods that are upsetting them. Now, if you eat a food that upsets you, there's inflammation in the body and yeah. that is going to cause a lot of physical problems. Now you know about this because you've suffered it um, in the past yourself and in fact, it's hard to believe looking at Ben, but you used to be a much bigger guy, didn't you? I was you a were big overweight. guy, yeah. I was about six stone fatter than what I am now. Wow. So yeah, I was a big guy and part of that journey and me kind of losing all the weight and discovering uh, and getting me into this industry was finding out I was gluten, dairy and wheat intolerant and unlocking those keys and cutting those food foods out was a huge step for me and the weight literally fell off me when I cut those foods really? out. Really? Yeah. That is incredible. I lost four stone in four months. Goodness to put me. it into perspective. Wow, so, yeah. that just shows you, doesn't it? It really is amazing. Yeah. So if you were to give our viewers three top tips for weight loss in your experience, what would it be? 
So number one would probably be to cut out gluten, wheat and dairy if you think it poses a problem. So simple thing, elimination diet. Cut all those three food groups out if you feel better, especially when you reintroduce them, if you feel worse, long term, cut them out. Second thing is listen to the food uh, or listen to your body as a response of the food that you eat. If you eat a meal and two hours later you feel worse off for eating it, then there is something wrong with that food or the composition of that food to the ratio of fat, carbohydrate and proteins. So food should make you feel good. It should make you feel energised and amazing. Third tip is probably find some exercise that you enjoy. We think of diets, we think of the gym. A lot of people hate the gym. Yeah. If you get kicks out of running around in the park with your dog and a frisbee, then use that as your exercise. Yeah. Make exercise fun because you will stick with it. You will enjoy it. Don't think that you have to be in the gym to reach your Because people do leave much more sedentary lives than they used to, isn't that Hugely. true? Yeah. You know, example of washing up. We used, Now we just put clothes in the washing machine. Yeah. You, we used to have to scrub them. We used to have to get involved in everything that we did That's in life, true. and now we don't do any of that. I know. Obesity certainly wasn't a problem, you know, maybe 30, 40 years ago, was it? The, the problem that we see now. Not to the magnitude it is now. And all the health parameters, diabetes, obesity, all they keep doing is going up, up, up. And we think we're doing the right things, but we're not. Otherwise, those figures would be going down or at least plateauing. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your advice. That was great. Thank Thanks. you. very well can hardly hear any sniffing there well done did you not notice i I can't see the brookers though i don't know (laughs) cheeky little monkey well anyway it didn't spoil my taste buds this week and i was off to the wee pie company out in glen car so you ever been out there it's fantastic. I should have been there instead of you. Oh, I'm telling you, you would have loved it. Now, they specialise in, in predominantly game pies, but they do oh, and just about everything, you know, beef and, and, in fact, I tasted mutton, which is quite a, a sort of an old-fashioned sort of meat. It was absolutely delicious. They do vegetarian as well, but I had an absolute great time. Let's see this. Well, I am delighted to be here with Rose Martin, the proprietor of the Wee Pie Company in Glen Carr. So this is a fantastic place you've got here, Rose. Thanks very much. Now, you've, you've been here a few months now. Yes, I have. You sell right. artisan and make artisan pies. Sure. Tell us about the range that you offer. Well, our traditional range includes wild red venison, which has been slowly roasted with red wines. We also use wild, we also use wild boar from just down the road, only six miles. And we use Jacob's mutton and also water buffalo from Fife. Our ethos is to ensure that as much as possible is local. We want to support local farmers. We have to have traceability and we have to know that um, all of the products that we use are fresh. We know where they've come from and we use them almost immediately. So there is no danger of your customers eating something that they don't know what it is? Absolutely not at all. I mean, I can, I can probably go to the majority of my farmers now and ask them exactly which beast um, has come into this shop for, for our pies and they'll be able to tell us that. That is absolutely fantastic, isn't it? That's what people sure. want to hear. Do you, do you find now that people are, you know, more fussy now and they want to know where it's well, from? very much so. I mean, they're absolutely on point when they, they, they want to know where it's from and they want to know that the animals have been treated as, as well as they should have been treated because then what they want to eat is quality yeah. and they want to eat local and they want to support local business. And sometimes we think of pies being unhealthy, but looking around the facilities here, Sure, I mean the, the recipe that I use for my we make our own pie shells and obviously the pastries that we use in the product. We don't use any animal fats at all, it's all vegetable oils and we try and keep the fat low. We only use wild meats or, or meats that are not intensively farmed. So they're really low in fat, high in protein and very, very filling, very good for you. Now you were telling me um, before that um, who you would think would eat certain kind of meats like the age range and you did a bit of research. Just just tell people about that. Yeah, for sure. We 
we did at least six months' worth of research, and the general information was telling us that the majority of customers who would eat venison, for example, would be in the age range of 55 to 65, and we found that is so incorrect. And the majority of our customers range from early to late 20s, right the way up to um, more mature people, shall we say. Yeah. Um, more and more of our customers want quality product. They want um, low-fat meats. They don't want intensively farmed meats that are, are full of gristle and all the rest of yeah. it. They just want quality. And they're prepared to um, see that in a pie, lying beside fresh vegetables as well. Fantastic. And people can come here and buy them, freeze them. Absolutely. Everything we make is fresh. Um, and we, are, we cook the pies on a Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So all of those days you can buy them. They'll have seven days shelf life in your fridge, and you can freeze absolutely everything because it's made fresh. Well, it all sounds marvellous, but well, those they do say the proof is in the pudding, or should we say the pies, so I think I better go and taste one. For sure, let's go. Well, this is the best part, the bit I love the most, and I get to taste it. So what have we got here, Liz? Vivian, what we have here is Jacob's mutton with caramelised carrot and rosemary, and you can see the local vegetables in there as well. Now, mutton is unusual. Well, I haven't had mutton as well for years, but... Not that I would think of lamb. Well, like the wild rabbit that we use, it's an old-fashioned meat. But one of the reasons why we choose to use mutton is because it has a consistency and texture of flavour. The different times of year where you buy lamb, what we found for our pies is the texture and the consistency of the meat changes. With this mutton that we've got, it's Jacob's mutton, um, we found that the texture and consistency and flavour, which is fantastic, just stays consistent year round. There is no doubt that flavour is amazing. It really is amazing. And it's got such richness and, and depth of flavour. So thank you very much. Not at all. Thank you. Stewart's a very talented lady who's got a finger in a lot of pies in the Perth area. I do. What don't you do, Gemma? She's uh, involved in the Perth Amateur Operatic Society. I am. The Perth Festival of the Arts is on soon as well. And you're also working in the hospital radio at PRI. I Where do. Where should we start, Gemma? Let's start with uh, Operatic Society because our show is next week. Tell me about the show then, what's going on? We're performing in Perth Theatre from the 9th to the 13th of April and we're doing Oliver Twist. Now, when you say we, how many people are involved in the Amateur Operatic Society? Well, this year we have 40 children that are doing it. So there's two teams of children, and there's about 40 people as well that are in the society that are members. So it's going to be a good show. Has Oliver been picked out yet? Yes, he has. So there's two of them. Do you just, like, for the additions for Oliver, this is just about, please, sir, can I have some more? A little bit more than yeah, that. Right, there yeah. was 160 children that turned up for the additions. Wow. So we whittled that down to 40. Unbelievable. Yeah. So it's quite, it's quite a big thing in the Perth area, isn't it? It is indeed, yeah. So which role do you take on, Gemma? I'm the rose seller. I get to sing at the end, who will buy my sweet red roses. You think you can give us a blast of that right now? Um, can we ask you? No, you'll have to come and see it. Yeah, okay, that's a good, yeah. good draw on that. Yeah. It's a good reason to go along. Exactly. So Oliver starts soon. That's next week, as you said. It is, yes. Now, the Festival of the Arts mm -hmm. is uh, something fairly new to the area, but it seems to be growing and getting bigger every year. It is. It's actually the 42nd Perth Festival of the Arts. So, yeah, it used to be more about classical and opera, but now it features a wide range of different arts. So there's um, Jules Holland headlining, but he's already sold out. Yeah, I um, imagine. Van Morrison. Van Morrison is actually going to be in Perth. Yes. I need to be there. Yep. You're not allowed to talk to him, though. Vivian needs to interview him as well. I think that she, we're not allowed to. I don't think so. Ah, you can sort it, Gemma. You know everyone. I know. I'll try. Right, and who else is, <laughs> what other headline acts do we have? Any, we have a lot of diverse entertainment. Yeah, there's a few. We have um, Sir James Galloway, who is the legend of the flute. He's toured worldwide. He is. It's mm -hmm. going to be a thrilling experience. <laughs> ah. Do you like that? She's good. Yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> and you're also involved uh, in Perth uh, PRI, Hospital Radio. As I well. am. You've been doing yes. that for a number of years now? Um, two and a half years I've been volunteering at the station. So I go around the, the wards and visit patients and collect requests. And then we play the requests for them at nights. 
So we're radio buddies. We are radio buddies. We're radio buddies. Uh, again, mm. Vivian's going to get jealous about this one, isn't she? <laughs> she might. So how do people get involved? If anyone wants to volunteer at Perth Hospital Radio, can they come on down to see you? They can. They can click on our website, Perth Hospital Radio, and we're also on Twitter, and we can send out some forums. And they can fill them in and come and be a volunteer with us. Great team. So basically everything we just talked about, we can find out more information online about the Oliver and, the, you can. and how to get involved even in the yes. in Perth Amateur Operatic Society. And there's more, when does the Festival of the Arts kick off? It's the 16th of May until the 26th of May. Check out the programme online and uh, you'll find out more about Hospital Radio. And you can actually hear Gemma, when's your show on there? Um, I am a ward visitor on a Thursday night between 8 and 10. So sometimes I chip in, but I just visit. Gemma, Gemma Stewart, nice yep. to meet you. <laughs> and you. You don't want it, and they don't want it. The local dustman, they won't take it. Hey, hey, throw it away. Chuck it in a bin, skip. Welcome to Bin Skips Limited. Ready to deal with your waste whenever you require. We run a comprehensive fleet of waste management vehicles, backed up with the resources required to process and recycle waste in the most effective way. You don't want it, and they don't want it. The local dustman, they won't take it. Hey, hey, throw it away. Chuck it in a bin, skip. It's been a big week or so in the Perth area, as you saw from our, our top story about the fire service being amal amalgamated and coming together. It's also Autism Awareness Month is April, and in particular, the 2nd of April, was World Autism Awareness Day. And this, in particular, was a big day for the Perth Autism Support Group, because they managed to open up their new premises just in time. And I was down there to talk to Angie Ferguson. It's Tuesday, April the 2nd, and today is World Autism Awareness Day, and it's a monumental day, it's a big day as well, in uh, Autism Awareness Month. April, we're joined by uh, Angie Ferguson, and Angie, you're you're very happy. You're smiling a lot because you've just opened this this perfect place, this HQ for people to come along to here in Perth. Yep, definitely. We've um, just opened the doors. We've been here for a month now, getting set up and ready to open the doors on World Autism Awareness Day. So we've just moved premises um, into self-contained premises, which will allow us to do all of our activities from in-house to save to go to different venues for the children. So it had to be planned and it had to be today. There was no yep. deadlines that, that weren't met and because it is, you know, it's a good thing that it's, it's here on World Autism Awareness Day that mm -hmm. you open up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've been here for a couple of weeks, but we decided to put off the official opening um, and mark it on World Autism Awareness Day just to help boost the awareness um, in Perth and Can Ross. Now, there's, uh, there's over 100 families that you help out in this area in particular. You support uh, many, many as well. What, what kind of support does that include? We do a number. We do full family support. So um, it's for families of children under the age of 16 who have been diagnosed with autism. Um, and we run weekly activities and clubs, holiday programmes. We do siblings um, groups and siblings training as well for brothers and sisters about the impact of autism that might have on the whole family. And we also do a number of parent support and information sessions and support meetings as well. So uh, just to make that clear, this is for children uh, yep. in, in particular, yep. this place, but you can offer um, support to over 16s? Yes, we offer support to over 16s if they're within the family. If they're diagnosed um, with autism and they're over 16, then our, um, there's another service, Autism Initiatives, that we would refer them to. Uh, there's many uh, websites, I guess, you could visit to, to find out more. And your, your Facebook page is always a good place to go. You're a bit of an addict, aren't you, Angie? <laughs> yes, Facebook addict. <laughs> yeah, you can find us on Facebook. Um, it's just facebook.com, Perth Autism Support. Um, we're also on Twitter, which is Perth underscore Autism. And our website's got all of our, the details of the activities and clubs that we run on it as well. How many times have you tweeted and uh, posted on Facebook about this day today? A lot. <laughs> Go and check them out yourself then. Uh, it's a big day and uh, you should find out more on their website. Angie, thanks for joining us. I take it there's some kind of celebration going on today after the opening of the place? Uh, yes, we've had um, a really good turnout today, so we'll just be carrying on the celebrations into tonight. And then we're doing a number of fundraising events throughout April to raise awareness of autism um, and also to do a bit of fundraising for ourselves. So there's lots and lots of details on the website and the Facebook page. Uh, let's make it clear once again as well where you are because you are quite central here yeah. in, in the fair city so give us the, the exact address yeah we're at 28 to 30 market street perth and you can't miss it you've got your bright colors in the front door yes. as well <laughs> angie ferguson thanks for joining us i hope thank today's a, a big success for you thank you thank you
a few weeks ago, it was Perth College UHI's Open Day at the Creef Road campus. So I moseyed on down there. You ever done a bit of moseying no. before, really? <laughs> Why am I talking like that? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, we moseyed around the whole corridors now. Looking to learn. Scaring of everybody, no doubt. Doing that, yeah, too, right. I had, I had makeup on and everything. I went to the beauty department. Uh, we went to the oh. fitness department. Did uh, you get any tips? Uh, you know what? I actually literally did get a, a screw tip. I am the fastest screw in the East. Or at least I was for about 10 seconds. Really? Yeah. It, it's hard to explain. <laughs> no, it's I not. don't think you it's should. It's a construction challenge. How oh. quickly can you put two screws into a piece of wood? Right. Yeah, what were you thinking? Nothing. Good. wasn't thinking. Uh, right, here's a question for you though, Vivian. How long would it take you to cook an omelette, a two egg omelette, no fillings, on a plate, folded, and then ready to serve? Mm. How long do you think it would take you? Two and a half, three minutes. Mm. I think you'll find out that it takes shorter time than that. But still, that was nowhere near the record. This is what happened when I was at the Perth College UHI Open Day. All right, thanks. We're cooking by induction here, guys. Use these before, yeah? No. Use these at Dundee College? I've seen them, yeah, I've yeah. used them, yeah. Okay, now, what we'll oh, right. now. What, what you have to do is you have to, you have two eggs, you break it in that bowl there, you whisk it up. We're not going to lose seasoning, yeah. Right, let's go for it, okay? Fork there, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You put a little, nice. the butter's nice there, put a little knob of butter in the pan. Yeah. Okay. Whisk up the eggs. Put salt in there, we'll go for all that. Oh, yes. And then put a bit light there. Now the time to beat is uh, 17 seconds. Pardon? What? <laughs> oh, I'm going to get it into the pan, not until it cooks. Yeah, hang on a minute. Okay, wait a minute. I'm, I'm still going to know how to use the stop watch. Sure. I do now. One egg for you. Uh, Are you okay, yours? It's supposed to be a two egg. Your time is sure. I'm timing Three. Ethan. Is, this two? is it one egg? Wait a minute. Just get the pan. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Two eggs. Two eggs. Okay, you're on the organic. Okay, on your marks. Get set. Go! Where's the bin? Bend the whole side, yeah? You're rolling the butter, I'm not sure. Why? Look at this, I'm moving. The butter is going to bomb. Oh no! I'm uh, burning meat! <laughs> Lisa, do something. You know what, I think my plan worked, but don't tell anyone. I, I did so atrociously bad at this, that means I'll never be asked to keep one again. Well, there is no danger that that was an omelette, I can tell you. In fact, that was not even scrambled eggs. So. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, I suppose you've got a point, not even the dog would have that. No, but guess what the record was for the fastest two-egged omelette? Folded on a plate, presented, what was the record? A minute? 17 seconds. No way. How impressive is that? that really? Yeah, 17 seconds by a student, not even by one of the chefs. If you want to find out more about the courses they have at Perth College, just check them out online. It's Perth College UHI. Fantastic. It's the place to go. And while you're online, why don't you check us out as well? We have a Facebook page now. It's Perth Internet TV. Please like the page and we will love you forever. If there's anything going on in the area you're involved in, tell us 
but we might be able to come down and film it all and uh, even take the girl on the cold down. <laughs> What's going on about my code? And yeah, also, yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting any sympathy. And also, please follow us on Twitter as well, on Perth Internet TV, or on my own one on at Vivian C. Get it right. Have you got many followers? I don't I'm getting a few. We should make that a mission for the year. <gasps> yeah. And you're going to try and get celebrity followers, famous um, followers. Yeah. And then you've got to try and get a tweet back from Think, them. Well, Bob Servant tweeted me the other day. There we go. We're off and running already. I've got one. There we go. I know. Okay, that's the challenge for now. You're not even on Twitter. Nah, well... Not yet. No, I'll get there eventually. Yes, you Yeah, you can, you can take out the slack for now. Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching Perth Internet TV. Please follow us online as well. And do check us out every week. I'm Stuart and... I'm Vivian. And we'll see you next time.